In this video, we'll take a closer look at the evolution of Spider-Man's web shooters from the 1970s TV show all the way to the most recent MCU Spider-Man No Way Home movie. We'll also take a look at some of the most wild versions of the classic web shooters, including hidden wrist guns and even a zombie Spider-Man that uses his veins and arteries as webs. Stay tuned to the end for some even crazier web slingers too. But let's start from the first live action portrayal of Spider-Man. Back in 1977, CBS aired The Amazing Spider-Man, a made-for-TV movie that served as the pilot for a short-lived TV series starring Nicholas Hammond as the iconic web slinger. In the pilot, there's a brief sequence that shows Peter Parker creating his web shooters. However, these web shooters didn't quite resemble the sleek and sophisticated devices we know today. Instead, they featured clunky metal blocks for web cartridges, an oversized trigger, and a nozzle that protruded awkwardly. To make matters worse, the actual web that shot out of the devices in the series looked more like shoddy fishnets than spider silk, making them pretty forgettable. In Japan, Spider-Man received a unique adaptation that put a fresh spin on the character and won over many fans. This version of Spider-Man bears more than a passing resemblance to the American Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, with a similar style and tone. While the suit largely followed the design of the comic character, the web shooter took on a bizarre and clunky appearance, looking like a collection of boxes mounted on a leather bracelet. But what set it apart was its unusual capabilities, which included the ability to store the Spider-Man suit and summon a massive spider mech known as the Marveler. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, starring Tobey Maguire as the iconic superhero, remains a fan favorite despite some of the harsh criticism that it received. One of the most significant departures from the source material in the films was the introduction of organic web shooters. Instead of inventing mechanical web shooters, Peter Parker now had a natural spinneret on his wrists that allowed him to generate his own webbing. While this take on the character was novel and unique at the time, it didn't accurately reflect Peter's scientific abilities as depicted in the comics. While some fans were excited to see the organic web shooters in action, others were disappointed that this deviation from the source material left out one of the most important aspects of Spider-Man's character his intelligence and inventiveness. Later live action adaptations featuring mechanical web shooters were more faithful to the comics and captured the audience's attention in a different way. Nonetheless, the organic web shooters remain an intriguing and memorable aspect of the Raimi films. In Mark Webb's adaptation of Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker took a unique approach to his web slinging abilities. Rather than crafting the web shooters from scratch, Peter repurposed the chassis and gears of a watch to create a distinctive design. These web shooters even featured a small screen that displayed how much web fluid he had remaining, adding an extra layer of functionality and technology to the devices. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 took things even further, upgrading the web shooters with sleek new designs and improved functionality. However, these upgrades didn't quite stand out as much as the earlier prototype versions, which boasted a more unique and eye-catching design. Nonetheless, the web shooters in the web vs. Spider-Man films remain a noteworthy addition to the hero's arsenal, demonstrating the character's ingenuity and resourcefulness in creating his crime-fighting gadgets. Tom Holland's Spider-Man has been shown using a variety of different web shooters throughout his time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In Spider-Man Homecoming, he started out using a pair of homemade web shooters that he designed and built himself. These web shooters were simple in design and functionality, using a wrist-mounted mechanism to shoot webs made from a homemade web fluid recipe. After helping out in the events of Captain America Civil War, Tony Stark took notice of Peter Parker's abilities and designed him a new high-tech Spider-Man suit that included web shooters with some advanced features. These web shooters were more powerful and efficient than Peter's homemade ones and featured 576 web shooter combinations, including taser webs, web bombs, and more. In Avengers Infinity War, Peter Parker donned the Iron Spider suit that was gifted to him by Tony Stark. The web shooters on this suit were even more advanced than his previous ones, featuring an even wider array of web types and a more streamlined design. In Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter Parker finds himself in a strange new world after a botched spell from Doctor Strange. While trying to help villains from alternate realities get back home, Doctor Strange creates a new set of web shooters that utilize mystical energy instead of web fluid. These web shooters allow him to send people to a group of cells underneath the Sanctum Sanctorum, adding a new level of versatility to his web-slinging abilities. The Ultimate Spider-Man animated series drew its name from the comic series, but it only loosely followed the modernized continuity. The show's original premise depicted Spider-Man training with S.H.I.E.L.D. to become a better superhero, along with a team of young heroes like Iron Fist and White Tiger. This animated series put its own spin on Spidey's technology. In this case, Nick Fury provided Spider-Man with an advanced new web shooter that boasted holographic projection and invisibility capabilities. While the enhanced web shooter certainly added a new layer of functionality to Spider-Man's abilities, it wasn't without its flaws. The clunky design of the web shooter didn't quite match the sleekness of Spider-Man's iconic suit, and some fans found it to be kind of an eyesore. While it may not have been the most popular take on Spidey's tech, it remains a noteworthy addition to the character's ever-evolving gadget arsenal. 
The web shooters in Marvel's Spider-Man game developed by Insomniac were as fashionable as they were functional. Hidden within his civilian wristbands until he needed them, Peter Parker could easily attach the shooters to his wristbands when it was time to swing into action. The high-tech design of the web shooters was fitting, given that Peter had been operating as Spider-Man for eight years in the game and worked as an assistant for Dr. Otto Octavius. Insomniac went the extra mile to make the web shooters stand out by introducing several special webbing modifications. Players could craft different types of webbing from electric webs that could shock enemies to web grenades that created explosive traps. These special webbing types made combat more dynamic, allowing players to use different strategies and tactics to defeat foes. Insomniac's attention to detail in creating a high-tech customizable web shooter system added a fresh spin to the Spider-Man mythos. In addition to Peter Parker, his clone Ben Riley has also taken on the mantle of Spider-Man on two separate occasions. The first time he donned the iconic red and blue suit, he made some significant changes, including creating a new suit design with a blue hoodie and a larger spider emblem on the chest. However, his take on the web shooters failed to catch on with fans. Ben Riley's design for the web shooters featured a band of capsules that allowed him to fire new impact webbing pellets and paralytic stingers. Interestingly, he chose to wear his modified web shooters on the outside of his costume, a design choice that was unique to the Scarlet Spider. Despite the mixed reception to the web shooter's design, Ben Riley's time as Spider-Man and Scarlet Spider remains a beloved chapter in Spider-Man's comic book history. One of the best and most unique web shooter designs came from Earth-8351, which first appeared in the comic series What If. The comic explored a reality where Spider-Man worked with Wolverine after accidentally killing Logan's friend Charlie in their 1986 one-shot. Spider-Man became a highly trained assassin, which influenced his web shooter design. The web shooters now fired bullets instead of webbing, making them one of the deadliest versions we've seen. Following the dramatic events of the 2014 Dying Wish storyline, Peter Parker found himself trapped inside the failing body of his arch nemesis, Dr. Otto Octavius, while Doc Ock assumed the role of Spider-Man. Though initially delighted with his newfound power, Doc Ock soon realized that being Spider-Man was much harder than it looked, and that there was much he could learn from his predecessor. Determined to be a better Spider-Man than Parker ever was, Doc Ock set to work improving on the original web fluid formula, creating a new and more potent version that was not only stronger, but also bulletproof. His web shooters also underwent some upgrades with a built-in camera and sonar sensors that allowed him to better navigate in the dark. He even created his own Spider-Bots to patrol the city and gather intelligence. For a time, Doc Ock's superior Spider-Man proved to be a popular hero among the citizens of New York, but it wasn't long before his more brutal methods and lack of compassion drew criticism and concern from his fellow heroes. Eventually, Peter Parker was able to regain control of his body and resume his duties as Spider-Man, but the legacy of Doc Ock's stint as the superior Spider-Man would continue to be felt in the years to come. In the Marvel Zombies storyline, Spider-Man gained a unique ability that sets him apart from his regular counterparts, the ability to use his veins and arteries as a substitute for his webbing. This allowed him to swing from building to building even though he was infected by the zombie virus. However, unlike the regular web shooters, this method of web swinging caused Spider-Man to feel pain. Despite his undead state, Spider-Man retained his sense of responsibility and continued to fight alongside other zombified heroes to protect what was left of humanity. Meet Sun Spider, the hero who wouldn't let her physical disability hold her back from fighting crime. Charlotte Weber suffered from a condition that weakened her joints and connective tissue, which means that she had to use a wheelchair and crutches for extra support. However, instead of letting her disability stop her from fighting crime, Charlotte used her crutches to her advantage as Sun Spider. Her crutches were outfitted with web shooters that allowed her to swing through the city and catch villains in her webs. With her quick thinking, and resourcefulness, Sun Spider proved that anyone can be a hero no matter their physical limitations. On Earth 71928, Spider Man went beyond just his usual web slinging abilities with his web shooters. He adapted his web slinging technology to include a small caliber chain gun magazine. His web shooters were loaded with a variety of special ammunition, such as high armor piercing, electromagnetic pulse, explosives, and incendiary rounds. Spider Man could easily switch between ammo types thanks to the sensors in his palms. This version of Spider-Man was a force to be reckoned with, capable of taking on even the most formidable foes with his incredible web shooting arsenal. In an alternate reality known as Earth 9602, a fusion of Marvel Comics and DC Comics characters called the Amalgam Universe, Spider-Boy was equipped with a unique weapon to aid him in his crime-fighting endeavors. Instead of his trademark web shooters, Spider-Boy was given a special pistol that fired synthetic strands of webbing. This technology allowed him to shoot webbing without the need for wrist-mounted devices, giving him greater mobility and flexibility in combat situations. With this new tool at his disposal, Spider-Boy was able to swing through the city and take down villains with even more ease and efficiency. Subscribe for more Marvel content, and if you liked the video, check out this one too.